an evil Namek bent on conquering the universe, Lord Slug, has come to Earth. Having regained his youth through the power of the Dragon Balls, he has unleashed his forces upon the planet. The Sea Fighters sprang into action to combat this new threat. However, one by one, these brave heroes have succumbed to Lord Slug's overwhelming power. But just as all hope seemed lost, Goku's rage has awakened the Super Saiyan within. The invasion has begun! Lord Slug, an evil Namek bent on conquering the universe, has brought his minions to Earth. Over the centuries, the ancient Lord Slug has relied on medical technology to extend his unnaturally long life. However, having learned of the Earth's Dragon Balls, he now intends to call upon the dragon to restore his youth. Yeah, I have been reborn! Feel the power of youth eternal! Sensing a great danger, Goku raced to the scene to face it head on. Slug! I'll give you one chance to leave this planet in peace! <laughs> this will be a good opportunity to test my newly restored powers! Is this the end of the Earth? Or can Goku turn the tide of the Slug invasion? Once again, we missed a significant amount of the story, and the story is somehow even weirder this time around. The film starts with an asteroid about to hit the Earth, they try to blast it away with a Kamehameha, but fail, and the asteroid near misses the Earth. Turns out it was, uh, was a spaceship, with Lord Slug and his henchmen on board. Turns out Slug had been going from planet to planet, terraforming them, or terra-freezing them rather, to be more to his liking, and turning some of them into giant spaceships called planet cruisers, which is what he planned to do with Earth. There are some significant changes made in the English dub. Well, maybe not that significant, but I think they're significant. The least significant change is that, for some reason in the English dub, they know that the asteroid is inhabited. So instead of trying to blow it up, they try to move it using the Kamehameha. That's really not important, but in the English dub, they also completely change Lord Slug's backstory. You see, Lord Slug is a Super Namek, which is a result of a mutation. In the English dub, Super Namics are just Namekians who misuse their powers. Now, in the original version, Lord Slug was sent away from Namek because of an extinction that was facing the Namekians. He was sent to the planet Slug to be safe. And in the English dub, he was banished from Namek because he was a Super Namekian and was abusing his power. Even with all of his training, Goku is still no match for the tireless Lord Slug. Has all hope been lost? <laughs> is that all you've got? And here I was hoping a Saiyan would make for a good challenge. He's strong! When Lord Slug arrived on Earth, he had no idea that the Dragon Balls were here or what they did, but he read Bulma's mind because that's a thing he can do. And he found out he could use the Dragon Balls to wish his youth back, so he did that. Much of Lord Slug, including some of the ideas for his henchmen, seem to be borrowed from King Piccolo back in the original Dragon Ball series. The Lord Slug movie also has a very similar structure to Tree of Might, which came before it. From what I understand, Lord Slug isn't a very well-liked movie. I've seen worse, it's just really weird. It's a subtle difference, but I think the reason they changed Lord Slug's origin in the English release was to make him seem more evil. Because he was evil because of a mutation in the Japanese release. And that's, uh, that's kind of weird to explain to people who might be watching it. Like, oh, he didn't choose to be evil, he's just like that. To make it make more sense to American audiences, I suppose they changed it. It's not like they make a big deal out of either origin, though. They just freak out when they learn he's a Super Namekian. You probably shouldn't confuse uh, Lord Slug's Super Namekian with Piccolo's Super Namekian. I think that's what he calls himself later in the series. Because they're very different things. This movie also does something else super weird that shares its name with something more important in the series. 
but you'll see what that is in a second if you don't already know what I'm talking about. Show you my true power! What? You don't mean... Before Goku's very eyes, Lord Slug has transformed himself, increasing his size and power tenfold. How's that? <laughs> a super Namek? What's wrong? Are you afraid of my true form? <clears throat> Not yet. It isn't explicitly mentioned in the game, likely to avoid any confusion, but Goku's sudden increase of power was actually him turning into a Super Saiyan. I believe the Japanese title for Lord Slug was Super Saiyan Son Goku. Because it was supposed to be a big deal that he turned into a Super Saiyan in the movie. But he didn't really. It was just a pseudo Super Saiyan. And it was really confusing, and I imagine a lot of people had no idea what was going on. But Dragon Ball movies have a history of not making very much sense. I mean, have you seen Dragon Ball Mystic Adventure? That makes this look perfectly normal. But yes, even after Goku turns into a Super Saiyan, Lord Slug then turns giant and, well, Goku's helpless again. And it's a big deal that, like, oh no, Lord Slug is too powerful for even a Super Saiyan to defeat. And they're like, oh no, everything's ruined forever. And depending on which version you watch, there might be rock music playing in the background. In case it seems like this final fight is taking a while, that's because Lord Slug is incredibly good at dodging attacks. Like, obnoxiously so. Not our melee attacks, mind you, just our projectiles. I deeply wish I had more to say about the movie, but it's just so bizarre that I think it defies all traditional criticism and analysis. It's just really, really weird. There are a couple of potential plot holes, and you kind of wonder why Slug didn't just wish for immortality. But aside from that, there's it's really hard to find anything to talk about. I mean, granted, if Lord Slug wished to be immortal, he wouldn't have the strength of his younger self. But it's not like we have the dead zone lying around to trap him in, so he'd be fine. He seems incredibly obsessed with not dying to begin with, so you figure that would be a much more sensible wish. But if he didn't wish for his youth back, then there wouldn't be another parallel to King Piccolo, so... You're not getting away with that! Yeah! Here it comes! Go! against the power of Slug, Goku's end seems certain, until Piccolo calls out a bizarre request. Go on, you have to whistle! Apparently, 
human whistling is on a frequency that causes intense pain to Namekian ears. As Gohan's whistling paralyzed Slug, Piccolo entrusted Goku with all of his energy. G goku take my power! Right! And with additional energy borrowed from the sun, Goku unleashed a spirit bomb powerful enough to crush Slug. Thus, Earth was once again saved from near disaster, and peace returned. <laughs>